from Pattern Traders. It is Thursday, September 22nd. Real quick update on BTC and what I'm expecting in the next 24 to 48 hours. The meeting came out yesterday with um, news about the, the interest rates and whatnot. I mean, that was just typically a, just a fuckery in the market. O overall, I do expect us to go relatively higher, roughly between 20,600 and 21 Ks for the time being from the low end. Um, if you want to look at it from a low, from a level to level play on a shorter time frame, lower time frame, an hour or one hour. Let me close that EMAs, get them out of the way. Your weekly open is sitting at roughly about 19.5, right? 19.4. Any close above the weekly open, and even a four hour, four hour or usually an eight hour, you could assume that we're going to consolidate and take out Wednesday high. Wednesday high is currently sitting at 19.8, 19.9. I do expect it to get taken out. Um, we did happen to take out Monday high and Monday low. If you look at the range real quick, Monday high was sitting at 19.6. We took it yesterday through that fuckery that we popped in the morning before the news. And then we also took out Monday low. But what makes it interesting is that if you look at it from this perspective, right? Let me just, let me just put this on the chart. Monday low, right? This is your Monday range. Take everything off. What does this look like for you guys? It looks like a pure deviation of the actual range, right? And then if you act when if you deviate the Monday range, like originally playing back in the day, what, what's your target? Once you get above, usually what happens once you get once you get above weekly open, which is sitting at roughly about here, right? That's your weekly open. You usually teleport straight up. And when you break out of this range, look at all these highs that have not been tapped, that have not been taken, that have not been tapped, just sitting here, right? So there's more liquidity to the top side than there is on the, on the downside. I think that we're going to end up pumping. Um, whatever we do in the next, like maybe 24 hours or whatnot, will result in a pump over the weekend. That, needless to say, even if we don't pump over the weekend overall from a from a structural perspective, I understand it looks bad. I'm for it. I'm kind of, I'm long right now at the moment. Um, I got into I, I've been holding AXS. I didn't get stopped out. I had a I had a stop loss at the main low, and or is it? I'll show you right now. AXS. So I had a stop loss at the main low, and I didn't get stopped out for whatever miracle. So I'm in the position right now. Uh, and I'm holding our uh, solo. But look how this looks, right? Even if you want a weekly time frame, look how this looks. So I'm not trying to front run an SFP bottom. I'm not. I wouldn't do that, especially in a downtrending market. But I'm trying to voice that if you're not leverage trading and you're actually spot DCA. You have a spot DCA type of method going on right now. The minute we reclaim this $13 mark, you're going to see a pump up to the highs, which is going to be roughly about like you know, 14 8 to $15, $14.80 cents to $15. And the reason I'm stating that is because this could end up being your deviation of, I don't know, maybe another one or two weekly candles. So yeah, you might get another poke down to 11.8 or whatnot, but as long as the low holds, I personally think that we're gonna gravitate to the top side. Once you create a, once you create this type of behavior, I'm not telling you that AXS is gonna pump like mad. I'm just talking about price action. Once you create this type of like flag, you break down. If you look at it from a different angle, a different time frame, right? Look at this from a different time frame. You created a pump, I mean, I'm sorry, you created a flag, you broke down, you consolidated, and now you're deviating that consolidation. Just take a second and just pay attention to what I'm telling you right now. Logically speaking, forget about the market conditions because I understand they're very bearish. I'm not going to argue that. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to, to long anything that in this type of market unless you know how to, how to have proper risk management. When you deviate a consolidation and you reclaim this, this level that broke down, I'm going to highlight this black so it could be easier in the eye. You know for a fact that once you get above this, your first target is going to be the $15 mark, right? You're going to go over here. And then over here afterwards, if you do a lower high, God bless. If you do a lower low, then you're fucked, right? So you have to be reactive, not trying to project where we're going to go. As long as you know that your first line of resistance is $13, 
And then afterwards, it's going to be the $15 mark. I'll even highlight it black so you guys can see it. So that's exactly how I'm playing this AXS. Now, in the event that we get do happen to dump back down over here, I'm wrong. I'm going to get stopped out. It's okay. It's spot. I don't care. I'm not leveraging it, right? Go back to BTC. Actually, let me show you Soul as well. So, so overall, it's disgusting. I know for a fact that we're going to go down here. Maybe not now, even not in a month, but most definitely within the next two quarters, we're going to be going down here. Well, more likely than not, we're going to end up coming all the way down here to $10 to $15. So if you look at the three-day, this is the consolidation. When you have this type of consolidation and an impulse and then a break back down with lows like this, that means that there's a lot of liquidity over here. So regardless of where we go here or here, it's going to come right back down here. All right? So just I'm just playing... I'm just playing like the, the I'm not, I'm not that I'm playing the rates, but I'm trying to play a small little like 50, 60% bounce on these stupid shit coins. Overall for Seoul though, if you look at it from a time frame perspective, go to a daily. I'm not even looking at oscillators yet, right? That's a whole different ballgame because oscillators look like pure shit and everything. We did the same thing. We did a flag. We broke down. And then if you look at it, I think it was the 12 or the 21 now. I forgot where I saw it. Here we go. It was the 21. There you go. This right here. So this block has been holding us up for since, uh, oh, since basically a full month. I know for a fact if we go up, right? If we go up and we come back down, we're going to break it. All right. So this is, this is what I'm saying. If we go up here, we get rejected and we come back down. This is not going to hold again. This is going to just collapse to the downside. You're not going to hold this again. You, you held it once, you held it twice, you held it three times, you held it four times. You're not going to keep holding this, right? It's going to collapse. So be cautious with soul. But yeah, that's the mark I'm looking for. Once we get above this mark over here, 34 or 34.50 at that point, then you know that if we get a daily close above that, your target's going to be up here. $40. Because you're going to be back in that old range, right? Get rough here, consolidate, target, and then we'll see what happens. It's hard to play the one hour and the two hour with all this nonsense going on. There's a lot of chop going on, right? A lot. It's, it's hard. Even for me, it's difficult. Uh, for Ethereum, you do the one-to-one -one extension, right? Because you have a high, you have a broken structure, right? You could take it from here. You could take it from anywhere you want. Structure got broken, period. You made a low. You could take it from here. It doesn't matter. Take it from here. Actually, this, this structure got broken on, on this side, but more likely than not, this is your main structure point right here, right? It broke structure. So this is your pivot. This is your high high. This is your break. And this is your lower high. So take your pivot. One, two, three. Where's your one-to-one -one extension? 12.52. That's why we got a reaction here. Where's your golden pocket? $1,000, which is basically this low and this low. Right? Makes sense? Very, very makes sense to me. So I'd be very cautious in this market, guys. Things are not looking good. Um, I, I, I am in Seoul and AXS long, and I don't care for them. I'm going to leave them. They're pretty good. They're pretty decent size. When you see your MSTX like this curling to the downside, the way you are over here, be very careful. Nothing good comes out of it. Overall, market should go down. I've said this before. I say it again. Anybody who's, uh, in denial about how bearish or how bullish we look or whatever the case is, we are very, very ugly. Very ugly. When you see a gray, the gray line like this curl to the downside, you got to run. When you see it PTT red like this, you got to run. Look what happened last time. I'm not saying we're going to have this magnitude. No shot. But you have to be careful. The RSX hasn't crossed above mid in probably since when? We crossed under this December of 21. December of 21, almost a year. You know, we got the first retest, second retest. You can't get above the midpoint. And again, the weekly time frame is a time frame for you to create some kind of indication that we're in an uptrend. You need the weekly time frame if you're downtrending like this hard because you broke structure on the weekly time frame. So when you break structure on the weekly time frame, no matter what you do, you're fucked, right? You're fucked. So, any move down to a thousand, I'm gonna buy. I don't care what anyone tells me. I'm gonna buy this blue box. Um, 
yeah, I'm going to buy this blue box regardless of what anyone tells me. And I'm going to put my stop loss and my invalidation under the main low, which is probably 800 or something. Yeah, 891. And we'll see what happens. But this consolidation should give us some kind of reaction over here. Some kind of reaction. The, the, the most important thing that you got to understand is that we don't really have any, any, any real support on higher time frame. Right, if you look at the left side, it looks disgusting. Nowhere am I telling you that we're going to go down here, right? When I'm not saying that, but if you look at it from a really higher time frame, it doesn't look good. It does not look good. And especially if the economy goes into like some kind of spiral effect to the downside, it's going to be kind of ugly. So be very cautious. This all to me looks like a bearish retest. ETH did it. BTC did it for some weird reason. Like if you were, if you were given a million dollars to short this, would you short this? I would. I would. Even if you go on the weekly, look at the way it looks. Hold on. This is your weekly order block, right? Let's put it over here. It's your weekly order block. You got your, you had your first bounce, break up, come down, retest, lower high. Break under, bearish retest, and now you're going back down. In the event that this breaks, this whole thing's in a waterfall. So it's going to collapse. Any v laps anywhere near us? Let's see. We have. Wow. This would be an interesting move to the downside. Very interesting move to the downside. This is pretty crazy. Well, the quarterly view up just slapped us completely. That's nuts. Let me see BTC. See, the quarterly view up there, we didn't even get up there yet. That's why I'm saying that. It's so weird how Ethereum, I guess Ethereum's merge was a news effect and it gave us that pump. But overall, this is disgusting. Be very careful, guys. Very careful. Um, that's pretty much all I'm going to tell you guys. And if you're looking at lower time frame, yeah, quarterly still holding us up right here. If you're looking at lower time frame, let me close all this. Are you playing level to level? It's five hour now. Very weird. Open up your five hour. Look at the order block. I just tell you something. If we get above this line over here, target will be this block over here. This is your over under. Okay. And Ethereum, the same thing. Go to your 12 hour. I said it yesterday too in the Discord. We're going for that 12 hour block. We tapped it beautifully. It's too much for me. Hold on. So we tapped it beautifully over here. As long as we stay under this pivot over here, unfortunately, if we can't get above this, we're going to go one notch lower to 11s. If we get above this, the target is going to be sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars $1,700. Pretty evident, right? Um, uh, I don't have that. Let me see if on in there. Let me see. So, yeah, you know about Soul already. It's pretty evident. Between thirty six and forty dollars, no one's in algo. I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. Just trade safe. I'll make another video over the weekend and talk to you guys about um lower time frame. Overall, though, man, this market looks so bad. Look at this market. This looks so bad. You have a weekly order block on Seoul. Even BTC has it now. Look at that. You have a weekly order block on BTC here, another one over here. And we literally have no support until pretty much down here, which is like that 12, 13 K range. So I'm hoping that the EMAs could hold us right here. This EMAs could actually give us some kind of support. Over here. So even if we go back up, or we come back down, we don't lose this. The two week candle, the two week candle, I wanted to close above 17.5 in three days. Any dump we get, I want the, three, I want the two week candle to close above this, this 200 EMA. It's a 200 EMA in the two week. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Stay safe. Any questions, feel free to DM me. I am here to help and support you mentally and. Please, don't
dive into this market yet. It's disgusting. We can't even get above the two day TMA band. This is terrible, man. I wake up every single morning because it's morning. It's eight thirty in the morning. I wake up every single morning there. I look at my TMA bands and we just look so bad. Everything is still pointing to the downside. It's like, when are we gonna catch a break? If you look at if you look at two thousand and where is where's this big dump? Look at this right here. Look at this. We had so many retards, so many pumps. And then that's when we really collapsed. We had nothing. Nothing. Just one big downtrend. So bad. Which makes me think that, which makes me think that this could potentially be Yeah, I'm sure what's gonna happen. That's exactly what's gonna happen, guys. I just forgot. I just realized this too. I saw this before, but I just remembered right now. Yeah, this is gonna be some kind of freaking bear trap deviation. Down, touch this, and just go straight up to freaking twenty eight, twenty nine thousand dollars, and then that's gonna be our BTC bearish retest. The way we had Ethereum bearish retest with this over here. It's exactly what's gonna happen, guys. Keep that in mind. Keep this in mind. This tread line. And see what happens when we come down to like 16, 16, 8 or whatnot. Once we SFP this little low over here. I still don't think we're going to break it with volume. I think whatever move we get is probably going to be a, um, a deviation on SFP. Cheers, guys.